country's going through something right now that's oh boy. sort of a sense of malaise, a sense of depression. Mm-hmm. And I wonder what you thought about it, because I think it's it's beyond COVID and lockdowns and cancel culture. It's also it started with, you know, technology obsession mm-hmm. and our selfie culture and the mm-hmm. you know, obsession with the celebrities and pictures and uh, physicality in, instead mm-hmm. of you know, what we think and what we believe and how we interact with one another. I just think there's so many things going on right now that make you feel like our best days are behind us. Uh, You know, the days ahead are only going to get worse. Mm. And as somebody who's actually literally written a book about obsession with celebrity culture and how damaging that is and some of these issues we've been talking about, like, how do you see it? How would you, if the country's your your patient, how do you diagnose its problems right now? Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. And and by the way, when we wrote that book, we did not, we, we sort of painted the picture of a landscape where this could happen, but we didn't understand that the technology was going to launch it into hyperspeed. Uh, and by the way, before I, before I talk more about this, I, I want to mention your liberal Democrat friends, which are now, uh, you, you can't be a liberal Democrat. Doesn't that make you a, 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 a turncoat? Doesn't that make you a <laughs> somebody that... Yeah, that I- yeah, that's not that's not good enough. No, no, no. That's what like is Bill that? Maher. You got to be a progressive, woke Democrat yeah. in order to be. Yeah, in the you're club. not. You're no. You're a, you're as bad as everybody in the center or on the right if you're a liberal Democrat. Um, but but it, it all roads need to narcissism, right? That's what the book was about, and and we've had a narcissistic turn, right? I, I told you about how I was working at the psychiatric hospital uh, back in the '80s, and you know every patient had a admission sheet with all their diagnostic criteria on it. And there a, was a slot back in those days for what's called Axis 2 or was called, I think it's, we're still calling it that, but the personality disorders. And when I got there, Axis 2 was different in every patient. It was all over the place, dependent, obsessive compulsive, anti-so, all over the place. Uh, and about 1987, 88, I noticed it all shifted such that every single patient that was admitted had what's called a cluster B diagnosis. Narcissist borderline sociopath. Those were the main three. Those are bad. And everybody, all of them. It just <laughs> begs no issue. That was just with the diagnosis in, in the in the box. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And at the same time, I was doing a radio show where I was talking to uh, adolescents every night. And I would say two out of every three callers had had childhood abuse, destroyed families, and was dealing with the consequences because they were calling about their relationships. And of course, the relationships was where all that trauma was acted out or where the ability to form stable relationships was impossible because of that trauma. And so I was witnessing the the large-scale childhood trauma, the pandemic of childhood trauma of the 80s, 90s, and maybe even the early 2000s. And it made sense to me, given how the 70s were. The 70s, I, you you got to understand, that was a decade where people went, hey, man, whatever you're into. And kids, they're just little adults. And they're sexual beings, too. And if they want to have sex with you, that's, that's the kid, man. That's what they're oh, into. Lord. This was the bullshit that was going around back then. And so it it put a rocket fuel into this. And by the way, when people acted out on children, they didn't do it just once. They did it many times and, and, and injured God knows how many. So this was, this was pandemic. <coughs> Excuse me. And those kinds of childhood traumas end up with narcissistic disorders. That's just what happens. Mm-hmm. So, and narcissism and narcissistic traits and borderline, it's antisocial, all that stuff, they're very difficult to, tra- to treat. Uh, people with those disorders locate the, the locus of trouble outside of themselves. They put it out there in the world. The world's the problem. I'm a victim. Sound familiar? And, and, and I would even go further to say that we've even moved off narcissism, I'm hoping temporarily, to histrionic, which is another personality disorder that I used to ne- never see very much, but it was, a, it was a narcissistic disorder. And clearly, we've moved into histrionic. Histrionic is superficial emotions that, that sweep back and forth, a tendency to get caught into trends, preoccupation with physical physicality, and a tendency towards delusion. People are literally delusional now in their thinking. You talked about the people in their rabbit hole. A lot of that becomes delusional in its process. It's how rigid yes. it becomes. Yes, and yes, so yes. And so I'm this hoping that piece, yeah, I'm hoping that piece is um, situational and that we'll just move back to straight narcissism once things settle down. If you're, if you're histrionic, <clears throat> if you have a histrionic personality disorder, can you can you get out of that? Well, if you have a, a personality disorder per se, uh, people argue about whether it can be approved or not. I, 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 I've seen it improved. I, I'm not worried about the disordered people, which is much smaller population as compared to those with the traits. So we're really talking about large populations with narcissistic 
traits, disorder, mm -hmm. traits of hysteronic, traits of narcissism, traits of antisocial, which, which is everywhere now, just everywhere. Yes, and yes, so how yes, do you I deal with those? That. Yeah, you feel it. And, and fundamentally, this is going to sound somewhat glib. I jump from a sort of a complicated issue of personality construct to sort of a glib recommendation, which is humans need a simple life. People need to keep it simple. And in, in, in the process of keeping it simple, they need to prioritize the, the elements of mental health, which are our relationships and our important relationships and our families. The fact that families have been sidelines is just another way to do things. That's disgusting and it is profoundly destructive. We need to focus on our families. I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not prescribing a particular type of family. I'm talking Federal about- Heteronormative normative patriarchy. I'm not, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not prescribing that. I'm saying to raise kids, you know this, doing it alone, it's impossible. You need, you need so help. Hard. You, so two so people, hard. two humans together committed to each other over the long term, creating a stable environment for child rearing and, you know, and advocating uh, virtues and values and all the things we do in culture and transmitting that and educating and keeping that stable across time. That's what we need. Now, I would say the second issue is if that can't be maintained, and I'm not certainly not taking aim at single moms or single dads there, I, I couldn't do it. I, I, I'm a hats off to you. But a single second relationship with an adult outside the home, again, sustained over years, has a dramatic effect on the outcome for kids. So relationships, families, and then service, meaning, doing things in society, doing things in the world that are meaningful. Uh, this is it. Uh, this is it's that simple that, you know, Freud summarized it as work, love and play. Most of us have work. Most of us don't have time for play, but I'd suggest we do that. But love, you know, writ large, our relationships is, is really what needs to be worked on. And it's what's difficult for people with narcissistic disorders. They won't enter the frame of closeness. That if closeness is threatening to them. So they manipulate and, and end up acting out situations that are commensurate with the past and just reenact these disturbed relationships over and over and over again. Mm. Keep it simple. And the Internet has not made that easy has made that worse, made it more difficult. It Relationships awful. have become disposable. People are usable. It's heroin. It's heroin. Oh, it's crack. Absolutely. It's a crack pipe, 100%. Uh, I was, uh, somebody put, put Future Shock, the video, uh, the, the Future Shock uh, uh, documentary about the book uh, by Alan, Alvin Toffler back in the day. And one of the things that I was sort of scanning through up, but one of the things that popped out was this idea, very prominent uh, piece of his uh thesis is that relationships become disposable and he didn't get into the consequence of that and now we're living it now we're living it mm -hmm. we can't do that we have to go back to basics so it's weird to me though is that this you know i just went over to i was in greece and germany and lo and behold there's another california it's called germany <laughs> that, that, that's a lot of the same stuff is going on there in terms of the government and the panic and the hysteria and stuff but when you when you get down to it, they're better because they still have intact family systems. They still have they still have um, relationships. They still prioritize relationships, and we just don't do that. We need to start doing that. <laughs>